Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch What Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the app today. Hey, y'all, it's your girl, Kiki Palmer. I'm an actress, singer, and entrepreneur. On my new podcast, Baby, This is Kiki Palmer, I'm asking friends, family, and experts the questions that are in my head. Like, is OnlyFans only bad? Where do memes come from? And where's Tom from MySpace? Listen to Baby, This is Kiki Palmer, only on Amazon Music. Watch what crap is. Watch what crap is. Who cares what happens when there's so much that crap is? Crap is. Crap is. Hello and welcome to Watch Your Crap Ends, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker and joining me today is the hilarious, joyful, and overall extremely pleasant person, Mr. Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Well, aren't you a little sweet tart? Oh, thank you. Good. How, you How are today? you doing today? Good. What's going on? We've got a freeze here in Texas. It's a freeze. Um, the, the notifications keep coming up going over my phone. Oh my God, it's a freeze. So I don't know. I don't know how dramatic I'm supposed to be over it, but everyone else yeah. seems very dramatic. How cold is, is it gonna? How cold is it gonna? I'm go, I'm flying there. Flying there tomorrow. So it better warm up for me. Well, it was like 65 yesterday, so that's how Texas is. It's real weird. Nobody really ever knows. Let me see what the weather says. It says it's 34 right now. So that's not oh, so shit. bad. 34. Is it? That's yeah, cold. I don't think it's bad. Well, it's cold And for then me. Tuesday, Wednesday, it warms up a little Thursday. Oh, that sucks. It's rainy and 35 degrees on Thursday. What the hell? The gross. high is 47. Yeah, that is gross. Wow, it'll Come be cold in, in Dallas then, right? Oh, gosh, I'm done with looking at weather. You know I hate talking about the weather. It's like my least favorite thing, and that's how I open the show. But a freeze is very extreme. We could all we could all fall, die. Well, everyone be careful in Texas, but don't let it stop you from coming to see us because we're coming. To, we have a show in Austin on Thursday night at Emo's. We'll be recapping The Real Housewives of Miami there, the latest episode. And then the very next day, we are driving to Dallas, and uh, we'll be recapping the latest episode of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. So come join us and huddle together. We'll be all warm and cozy together. We're going to have a great time. It's so exciting to be back on the road. We ended our last tour in, in Texas, and we're picking it up exactly in the same space. So please come join us. We have an amazing time. And then after that, we go to Phoenix, and then we go to L.A. for the Golden Crappies. It's going to be an amazing night. We have already some super cool, amazing guests and then we go to Charlotte, and then Atlanta, and Denver, and Salt Lake City, Seattle, San Francisco, Toronto, Philadelphia, New York City, D.C., San Diego, St. Paul, Chicago, Columbus, Boston, and finally, Mashantucket, Connecticut, for the Foxwoods Resort and Casino. And uh, there's already, we already have some, there's some little guests that might be joining us along the way as well at some of these stops. So I think uh, go to watchercrappers.com to get your tickets and don't miss out. Don't miss out, because it's going to be a lot of fun regardless. And uh, that's the big news. That's that. Uh, this week's bonus episode is going to be a Real Housewives of New Jersey preview. And we're going to do that on Crappens On Demand as well. So we're so excited for that show to be coming back next week. So join us for that on El Patreon. Okay, yeah. so here we are with Below Deck. 10 out of 10. No, it's, <laughs> it's not my rating. It's episode 10, season 10. Whoa. Wow. We. Wow, can you believe it? Yeah. So, yeah, and, and ten, it ten. opens 10 10, 10 10 wins. And the uh, episode opens up with a lady in a chair really needing food. <laughs> a hungry lady in a chair. So, basically, we have these guests and they're on a beachside. Picnic. You know, I like when everybody kisses a pregnant woman's ass, by the way. Oh, great. You're giving life. Well, guess what? I do nothing for the world. And when I am borderline going to kill somebody because I'm hungry, guess what everyone says? Who cares? You know, yeah. I feel like I should get people running around, too, when I'm when I'm about to kill somebody because I'm starving to death, which is every five minutes of my life. You know, I'm sick of pregnant. I'm sick of pregnant. Um, what is it called? Privilege. I'm sick of PP. <laughs> pregnant privilege. PP. OK, yeah, I uh, all of us are goal, hungry. My goal for this podcast is just so it gets big enough 
where if either of us are hangry, people are, are people are running across cities like Caroline Fleming when she went to Copenhagen when they had a, a chef run out of the restaurant and locate her some Comte cheese. Like that's my dream is that people just scamper just to. <laughs> They Just literally the already else. do that for you. What are you talking about? They do do that for you. You people have been bringing you street waffles for years. <laughs> you know, the people are very that's true. sensitive to your stomach and your needs. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Thank you, Crappins. Have... Yeah. Either way. So we have drama music because Prego's pissed and the guy's like, yeah, honey, I just, I don't know why they haven't, I'm like so bitter at this lady. Like nobody feeds me, you know, and you're littering, you're making human litter. So anyway, Adam's like, I don't know why they haven't fed us, honey. I don't know. And then Ross is like, well, we've got an eating area here. We've got lounging over there and a games area there with various activity. Are any of them eating, Ross? Get away from the pregnant lady. She's going to kill you. If I'm starving, don't tell me there's a games area. Unless it's board games. I'll be okay with that. Yeah, but honestly, fuck generally off. speaking, we- if I'm starving, say, oh, here's a Kit Kat. That'll make me happy. Yeah, Thanks. you don't you don't say we've got multiple areas set up for you and none of them have food. <laughs> like who does that? Well, uh, don't worry, they're on top of it back on the boat because then we cut to Sandy in the wheelhouse going, "Hey, do these windshield wipers work?" <laughs> <laughs> Things that maybe and you'd hope your captain would look into, you know, on like the first day she steps on the boat. Right? Um, and Rachel is radioing Alyssa. She's like, oh, Alyssa, Alyssa, Rachel, Alyssa, Alyssa, Rachel. And Alyssa's just like, oh, my God. Oh, I can't. Oh, when, are these the windshield wipers? Do these work? <laughs> Alyssa, Alyssa, Rachel, Alyssa. God, it's just wasting my time. The clock is a ticking. It's about to thicken. <laughs> and then uh, Rachel tells us, uh, uh, Alyssa's busy doing something else, and I'm, like, tired, and I'm getting frustrated, and lunch is uh, definitely a clusterfuck. <laughs> and then Sandy finally Cut finds to Captain Sandy wipers. pressing a button. Yeah, and she goes, ah, windshield wipers. Windshield wipers, look <laughs> at that. Windshield wipers, sort of like a little dance, kind of fun. I like it. So <laughs> the guests are getting really antsy, and they just really want their food. Uh, but they are playing games in the meantime. And at long last, <coughs> Rachel gets on a boat and she makes her way to the beach. And uh, she's like, huh, well, for lunch, we've got a pregnant lady who is hangry. But I've got a bean salad, which the primary loves. Beans, beans, the musical fruit. The more you eat, the more you toot. The more you toot, the better you feel. So eat beans at every meal. <laughs> the more you toot, the more pissed off I get. So toot one more time and I'm drowning you in cooter, bitches. You know, so I Rachel's w- I, that like, was, that was a cool little rhyme you did there, Rachel. I was sort of doing my hands back and forth, except it wasn't my hands. It was the windshield wipers. Got him to work. Found the button. You know, it turns respect. out windshield wipers are just twinks doing the flossy on a window. <laughs> hey, you know what? Beans, beans. They're good for your heart. The more you eat, the more you have a heart. Bonnie Raitt said that once. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they serve some food, and um, Rachel pops a cork, and it hits Fraser and Alyssa in the head because we see it hit Fraser in the head. But then Alyssa goes, "I've been concussed," uh, <laughs> so I don't know if it hit him and then hit her. But <laughs> he's probably like, "I probably deserve funny. that. I'm, I'm a wretch right now. I deserve every cork in my forehead." Absolute so monster. then Tony passes Haley on the boat and he goes, Haley, stop eating. Control yourself, woman. She's like, I have no control. That's the problem. You better watch your fucking step. Yeah, hey, listen, Tony better, Mr. Yeah. I have to work out at five in the morning every day and yell to wake everybody else. You tell me one time, uh, you comment one time about what, what I'm putting in my mouth. We'll see how how much longer you have legs to work out in the morning, okay? I have no problem going in there to someone eat shaming me and slamming them in the knees with a uh, with an iron pipe, okay? How dare you? How, yeah, how dare, dare you? you? As someone who will be the future star of an I'm eating a lot montage on this very episode, I say how dare you say that to Queen Haley? You do not do that. He has I mean he has a fucked up relationship with food. I think we can all agree, right? Like he might be I'm not going to say he has an eating disorder because I'm not in a position to say that. Um, But his relationship with food is really fucked up. Well, actually, it's not really fucked up. 
it's just like normal fucked up. It's like he is. I've never with noticed a out. relationship with food. I mean, I've yeah, seen the working out thing, obviously. But. No, he has a food thing, too, because he works out really aggressively. But then every time they go out to eat, he actually orders a lot of food. And then he he has this thing here where he's basically telling Haley, like, oh, control yourself with your you're eating too much. And then later on, he's like binging again. So, um, I mean, you're allowed to binge and not have a fucked up relationship with food. But I'm starting to feel like Dr. Ben over here is saying there may be an issue. Hmm. Well, he's hmm. a fucker. I'll tell you that. So then we get a phone call with Norma and Sandy. Norma's texting. Um, the new Dex do will be there this evening. So you'll have one person doing two jobs when you still can't do one. Congratulations. Hey, well, you know, uh, Sandy, maybe if you had a, a little bit of leadership on that boat and gave anyone any idea of what the hell they're supposed to do, maybe you wouldn't have to lean on me so much. Hey, need me to send over instructions on how to use your windshield wipers, you dizzy bee? <laughs> hey, how about this? How about instead of sending over instructions on, on windshield wipers, you send over instructions to how to not drive people off your own damn boat all the time, you bad <laughs> captain. <laughs> Sorry. Love ya. So Sorry, Sandy. I'm just not on my game today. <laughs> I just I haven't had my <laughs> granola. Jeez, uh, has someone been eat shaming you today? What the heck, Norm? Yeah, one of your deckies came over here. I came over to the staffing agency and shamed me and didn't have breakfast, so I can't do our normal, you know, tit for tat thing that we normally do. Still think you're a bitch, though. Don't want you. Don't you want to think you're oh, I'm taking it easy on you. You're a bitch to a dinosaur. Love you. Bye. <laughs> bye. Hope your boat sinks. So Ross calls for Ben and um, Adam thanks Rachel and asks what they're doing for dinner tonight. And she's like, oh, I was thinking a uh, three course. And he's like, yeah, OK. And uh, so then she does a big jump onto the tenter wackily. You know, it's like yeah. Rachel. So she's like falling backwards over the boat and putting her ankles in the air and singing cooter. And everyone's like, yes, <laughs> yes. And meanwhile, Ben is uh, texting Camille, and he's like, Camille, I miss you. Call me when you can. I mean, to me, it's like it's like sending a love letter to an oil spill or something. I don't know. It's just like, <laughs> why do you want any part of that? Right? Um, and then they're unloading the tender, and the captain's standing there, because, you know, she's a helpful captain. So she's like, Ben! Come on, you're gonna hurt yourself carrying all that. Give me some of that. Come on, we we got some more charters left. And then he hands her stuff, and she drops it all over the deck. <laughs> uh, <And> me will... <laughs> ben Ben me Norma will... Ben Ben Norma, <laughs> please tell Sandy I said ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> hey hey uh, Ben Ben Norma, please tell Sandy uh, it worked. My telekinesis finally worked. Okay, great. So the captain checks with Rachel and asks her how it went. And she's like, oh, I walked in, I played it, did a prat fall, ankles went in the air, said cooter a couple of times, and I left. And she's like, there you go. Good job. Okay, hold on. I'm going to pump the air. Now I'm going to pump my fist in the air. Now I'm going to give you a double thumbs up. Then I'm going to air hug you. Air hugs. And she's like, yeah. And then I talked to the primary about dinner, and I said, want to just do three courses? And he said, yeah, nailed it. And she's like, oh, God, you sure did. Two thumbs up. Oh, I don't know if you can see this. Got two toes up, too. You're <laughs> killing it, Rach. You're killing it. Let's not overlook the most crucial part of this moment where Sandy went, snap. <laughs> Last week so was So then we respect. see Imogen. This week is snap. So then we see Imogen, who I'm already sick of, this fucking Imogen. She's like... She, she's like trying too hard with her wackiness. She tells Fraser, she's like, do you know what these towels need? Unicorns! <laughs> I'm like, oh God, now you're adding in an image and laugh? Come on. I don't even think you're really British. I think you're just making this shit up. Yeah, she's she's definitely from like Iowa. So, um, yeah. they get, <laughs> like she definitely has an I Iowan, Iowan British accent. So they um, they all get back onto the tender and they're they're back on the boat and Sandy's like, hey, how was it, huh? Mad respect or snap? Which one is it? And the guests are like, it was amazing. I'm gonna say that's more of a snap than a mad respect. Awesome, awesome. 
<laughs> mad res- mad, mad snap spect. Mad snap spect. So then we just see Haley pass by and go, Oh my god, I look absolutely hideous right now. <laughs> um, so towels being uh, fold and rolled and shots being made and um, mango shots. And Katie is talking to uh, Fraser. Oh god, this is so cringe. Oh my god, yeah. here we go. Let's, this is a big cringing for Katie episode. And Katie yeah. seems like a nice person. And so I hate saying it but god damn lady get a fucking life you're horrible you're making me cringe this is not fair have some self-respect please have some self-respect i can't with it okay so katie is like fraser ross is gonna move into my room and then the new stew is gonna move into your room all right <laughs> and ross is like oh we've broken up though haven't we she's like no we didn't we only broke up for 12 hours and he's like so there's something for the people to talk about i suppose <laughs> Another Bonnie Wright reference of the week. So he tells us, Katie and I aren't exactly mm, stable yet. We're figuring out where we are. There's potential for problems, and I shouldn't roll the dice on that potential. Yeah. Complicated. I'm like, if you're if the guy you're interested in is basically referring to relationship on like degrees of stability, I feel like that's a bad sign. I feel like that's not like the romantic language you want in the early stages of love. Yeah. So then Haley and Alyssa. Mm, also, he's a total fucking drunk. Oh my god! Even before the episode, I mean, I said it the first second he came on screen. That guy's a fucking drunk. Like you can just see yeah. it all over. I can smell him from here. Okay, and there's a pane of glass between us. So <laughs> Haley and Alyssa are talking at the bar, and Haley's like, oh, "I'm really excited to go out with you tonight. I'm excited like a dick to get out of its pants anytime I walk in the room. All right, go." <laughs> and Alyssa's like, um, "I'm definitely not, because people definitely are making me feel like it's my fault that Camille went home, and it makes me feel really bad." Uh, oh, who thinks that, though, love? And she's like. Ben, definitely. Well, he's going to be like that because, you know, they were like a thing, like a very sad, sad thing, you know? So don't worry about it too much, love. She's like, I just feel emotionally jumbled. Like, I don't know, maybe I'll just put on a happy face tonight and do something that'll make people more angry at me. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, I'm just like emotionally jumbled. Like, I know that she's the reason she went home, but it doesn't help how I feel. It's just like fucking sucks i'm not buying one ounce of this from Alyssa. this whole like plea to the audience like i'm really the good guy here i mean camille was the asshole in that situation and it is camille's own fucking fault she went home but this whole Alyssa pretending she's not an asshole and like somehow trying to now get pity for camille going home is hilarious to me yeah yeah that that's the thing Alyssa. camille deserved to go home but now you're on like now you're on display like and you're an asshole too so you're gonna yeah. not as much of an asshole but you're still an asshole so <laughs> it's not gonna work out so sandy um sandy's like hey ross ross frazier please come to the bridge god i love saying that it's like 1994 nbc god hey great news we got a new dex do coming in and his name is tyler okay he's got a lot of experience has tony's hair and he's you know he loves to clean so get ready He's younger than you, he's got more hair than you, he's prettier than you, and it says really strong and serve. I was just waiting for Fraser to just start unraveling and sobbing on the floor. <laughs> and he tells us, he's like, thank God, I know a couple of boats he's worked on, and Tyler definitely has more experience than both girls combined, so that fills me with confidence, I feel helpful I'm like oh my god he is gonna lose <laughs> yeah. his mind the you know the needy insecure queen will be coming right up and i cannot wait it's like welcome to fraser's act two for the season yeah exactly so now the guests are having dinner and they're joking about one of them's joking about losing weight in cuba when they went to cuba and then another one goes well you don't go to cuba for the food am i right I'm like <laughs> I feel like that's actually one of the selling points of going to Cuba, quite frankly. Like, that's like, is Cuba food, Cuban food, like, universally known to be delicious? You really just go for the communist adventures, don't you? You go for the... Oh, Cuba. Go for the vehicles, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> the cigars? I mean, I don't fucking know. So Alyssa's like, uh, she's back with Haley, and she's like, oh my God, Captain just called Fraser and Ross at the same time. What do you think that's about? Is it my fault? Are they blaming me for something? Is it all three of them, like, blaming me? <laughs> and the captain's like, okay, Captain, Captain, cruel, cruel. There's a new deck stool, which rhymes with cruel, which rhymes with you. We're all you, and you are all us. Let's hug Tyler ASAP. That means as soon as possible, for those of you who still haven't found the button for the windshield wipers yet. LOL. <laughs> Snap. And Tony's like, I knew it. It's like, oh, did you? So, hey, hey, uh, Captain Sandy to Tony, I heard you say I knew it. Did you know that there'd be a Dexter coming or that his name would be Tyler? Okay, we're going to need some specificities on this one. <laughs> Commercials. Here comes one right now. It's really hard to stick with working out. Oh my God, it's really, really hard. Me too. And it's a new year, and it's really time to get our butts in shape. And you know what? Peloton makes it really easy. Oh my God, you know I'm a big Peloton fan because Peloton is more than just a bike. You probably already know that Peloton makes bikes, but what you may not know is that they also make treadmills. And no, not all treadmills are the same. With the Peloton Tread, you can seamlessly adjust your speed and it can automatically adjust your incline while you're taking a class so you never break your stride. I have used a Peloton Tread and I can I can attest that this is what happens. It is a lovely, lovely experience. And by the way, it's also not that big. I was shocked by how compact it is. Because nothing gets you moving like the perfect song, Peloton offers the best playlists with a variety of genres. Whether you're looking for EDM, 90s pop, something soulful, Peloton has music to fit your mood. It's fitness for all levels. Like You don't have to be a super athlete to enjoy Peloton because there are classes for every level. Whether you're squeezing in a power walk or training for a marathon, Peloton can help you achieve your fitness goals. Try Peloton Tread risk-free with a 30-day home trial. New members only, not available in remote locations. See additional terms at onepeloton.com slash home dash trial. Hey, I'm Arisha. And I'm Brooke. And we're the hosts of Wondery's podcast, Even the Rich, where we bring you absolutely true and absolutely shocking stories about the most famous families and biggest celebrities the world has ever seen. Our newest series is all about the incomparable diva, Whitney Houston. Whitney's voice defined a generation, and even after her death, her talent remains unmatched. But her incredible success hit a deeply private pain. In our series, Whitney Houston, Destiny of a Diva, we'll tell you how she hid her true self to make everyone around her happy, and how the pressure to be all things to all people led her down a dark path. Follow Even the Rich wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen ad-free on the Amazon Music or Wondery app. Um, so Ross goes to meet Tyler and, um, he's, it's like a beautiful sunset shot of him coming on this tender and he's got long curly hair. We just see sunglasses, you know, and Ross meets him and he's like, hello, I'm the bosun. Here's Tony. He mostly works out mm, grunts. Um, and then we meet Tyler. Tyler's from South Africa. And uh, Ross tells him, well, you've just walked into chaos and a possible hand job. I'm an extremely <laughs> horny person. <laughs> you know, it's funny that he's from South Africa. That's where I first learned to surf. And uh, down in Durban years ago, I missed the flight whilst I was there once because I was in jail. But it's a great country. Great country. I'm glad I can be an ambassador for it right now at this moment. So... <laughs> This Tyler looks like he's got Tony's hair, but he looks like his face reminds me of that chef that they had on a few seasons ago. He was like the soft spoken chef who like pulled up like a sea cucumber once. And he was like this amazing. Oh, chef. oh, no. The one who was like into tantric yoga and shit. No. Yeah. But then the, in the last part of the season, we found out he was also he was just like another sexual harasser like everyone else that season. Yes, he pretended to be all, like, hippie, but then turned into, like, a total gross pig. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, God, I did not want to remember that guy. Thanks, dude. <laughs> he do- Tyler does not look like him. Tyler is beautiful. I think he's so cute. He's like a little angel. And Captain's like, hi, I'm Sandy. And he's like, oh, hi, I'm adorable. Nice to meet you. <laughs> he's like, oh, I enjoy, in a very, in a very weird Sick way. I don't know. I'm making Scottish. He's like, 
I enjoy in a very sick way the weird parts of yachting that most people would never think are enjoyable. Everything has an order that has that it has to be in. There's one way to fold a towel, and that's perfectly in three. My OCD is self-diagnosed. It's not clinical. I'm just a crazy person. I'm like, well, I'm sure people who have real OCD really appreciate that comment, Tyler. He is going to push Fraser over the edge. I cannot yeah. wait. It's going to so, be a passive-aggressive battle of the gays. It's going to be wonderful. Oh, I think t I think Tyler will straight up be like, mm, I've never seen it done that way, so not really sure where you heard it. That's passive aggressive. That yeah. way. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's going to be like, oh, so do you want me to organize the pantry this way just because I've never seen it done that way and it just seems like inefficient and not organized at all? I can yeah. do it my way if you want, though. Can't wait. So Alyssa meets him. She's like, hi, how are you? I'm Alyssa, your second stewardess. <laughs> and then we just cut to Ross eating Doritos straight into his little room camera. <laughs> it's really weird. I don't know why we needed that. <laughs> And then Fraser's like, hello, Tyler. So here's the pantry. This is how you wash a dish. And this is how you dry a dish. You'll be able to handle that, right? And he's like, got it. He's like, got all of the dishes stacked up in two seconds. He's like, jump, 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 jump. Well done. Interesting. I mean, you do have a strike against you and that your name does not fit in with the NBC Thursday night lineup of 1994. But... Your ability to do dishes seems to make up for that. So then we cut to everybody getting ready for this dinner. And then Rachel is talking to Fraser right before dinner. And she's like, okay, Fraser, so tonight, please give me communication. I'm going to need some of that from you. And he goes, oh, yes, I want to get better at that. Because I feel like I'm just running around like a crazy bitch. Actually, I have to run. I've got to run. And he runs <laughs> off. And we just see him running through the hall and down the stairs. And Rachel's like, yeah, service. Everybody's always running around, you know, like with their heads cut off or whatever. Right. And she's basically saying that she really enjoys, like, when he, when you, she just hears him going up and down stairs. And that, like, every now and then he misses a step and she giggles. <laughs> <laughs> so then, then we get this quick cut to Ben, like, psyching himself up to call Camille. I'm like, why are you in your head about calling Camille? Why are you nervous about calling her for crying out loud? No one should ever be nervous about calling Camille. Uh, so then she's, uh, Fraser's like, okay, um, I'll take these plates up now. And Rachel goes, no, actually, give me five. And he just takes them and runs away. And she's like, okay, <laughs> then. So sometimes I'm, like, talking, and you'll just see him, like, beaker. Like, me, 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 me. He just speeds by you, and you just see a blur. Um, so then Fraser's like, okay, guests, welcome to dinner. This is in honor of your baby on its way and they're like oh my god how sweet fraser oh my god it's fresh sauteed baby oh <laughs> applesauce and breast milk enjoy everybody <laughs> so rachel's, Placenta. rachel's like uh fraser calls and says uh that he sat everybody and rachel's like oh i really thought they were just still getting ready <laughs> So she has knocked this all down to three courses, and the guests are reading the menu, and it's salad, fish, and dessert, which is a pear and lemon sorbet. And this sounds too light to me. I would be like, yeah. mm, and French fries, and some sort of a cake, like a sorbet, a fish, and a salad. Are you toning me right now? Because I feel <laughs> like Tony is serving this. Yeah. So then, um, meanwhile, Haley's, Haley and Tyler are in the rooms cleaning, and Haley sees Tyler folding something. She's like, how are you doing that so fast? You're amazing. Okay. You don't You're like cold lube on a summer day. Yeah. <laughs> You're like the first time I discovered electronic toothbrushes. It's amazing. <laughs> Lost my mind. Uh, haven't had gingivitis in me twat in a long, long time. <laughs> You don't understand how much Fraser is going to love you. And she tells us, Tyler's obviously amazing at housekeeping. He's good at all the things I'm actually horrific at doing. And she, he's like, thank you. And she's like, you make me look so shit. <laughs> anyway, if you need me, I'm in the bathroom jerking off myself. <laughs> Hope you don't mind. I'll just be inspecting your toiletries. <laughs> so every, all the guests like the food. Everything's good. 
And then while they're eating, we then go up to the deck where Katie and Ross are talking. And Katie's like, uh, oh, uh, by the way, uh, when I showered, I was like, oh, I can't just like walk out. So like if you move in, like then it just like all worked out. It's like, oh, <laughs> girl, God, the cringe. stop. stop. Uh, and he's like, um, am I supposed to? And Tony's like, come on, man. She's inviting you. And Katie's like, are you serious right now? And Tony's like, yeah, you just caused so much drama on this ship, bro. And Ross is like, without even trying. I think it's Tony's bedtime, Tony. Go to bed. <laughs> and Katie just sits there looking at him like she's so hurt. I'm like, how many times are you going to try and bring this up? You're begging at this point, Katie. Yeah. Just fucking stop. You're begging for a crinkled up paper bag that's like just been splashed <laughs> by mud puddle by a passing bus. Just stop. And you're trying to seduce him with your, um, oh, I can walk out of the shower naked now <laughs> tactic. So um, then, meanwhile, Tyler and Haley are talking about relationships, and Tyler's like, Will, I've just started something new. He's from Savannah. And uh, I've had like a crying fit when I had to leave. Uh, it was very difficult to, to say goodbye to him. And uh, we find out that his sexuality is fluid and he grew up. Oh, here's another classic below deck trope. He grew up in a small religious town. So now he's on a boat so he can sail the world and explore things. Yeah. Um, and so Rachel is happy that they only did three courses. And then Ross and Katie are making out in the hall. And then Tyler is, Tyler goes to his room, which he's the new room. He's Katie's new roommate, right? So yeah. he goes in there and he goes, so is everything always such a mess? And she goes, yeah, kind of. I mean, wish I could say different. <laughs> I'm not gonna. And he's like, oh, I'm just not used to that. And she's like, yeah, so me and Camille, like, it didn't matter, like, if it was, like, a girl or a guy, we just, like, like, jibed, like, we just jibed so well. And then it just cuts to Camille twerking off the second bunk in a thong, like, with her butt right in the camera. <laughs> yeah, well, she says that they jive so well together because she goes, because, like, we didn't, care, we didn't care if, like, shit was on my bed or, like, her bed or, like, on the ground. And he's, like, not into that at all, meaning he's not into being, like, <laughs> a complete slob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She says it as if like it's kind of a crazy thing. It's his thing. personality flaw, you know? Yeah. So uh, now it's the next morning and Tony's working out and Sandy sees Rach and goes, Hey, how how did your dinner go, huh? Did you uh did it did you did you hit the same high as I felt when I found the windshield wiper button? She's like, <laughs> Yeah. It was awesome. Thanks for giving me a kick in the ass. Oh, no, I wasn't a kick in the ass. Oh, in the good way. I meant the good way. Okay, you know what? Let's have a talk later. It's like, geez. Now you have to have a talk with her? What the hell? How about go talk with Ross and tell Ross to stop, like, fucking his subordinates? Mm -hmm. uh, so then Louisa is talking to Imogen upstairs, and she's like, So, Imogen, do you always sleep with a mask? And she goes, I'm always. And then it purposes as a headband when I'm sick of wearing it as a mask. <laughs> That's an image in laugh TM. <laughs> Louise is like, I have to get off this boat. My child cannot be born in the presence of this crazy woman. <laughs> so <laughs> please don't like, let me give birth here. Please. <laughs> please. <laughs> please don't let her soul touch my baby's soul. So <laughs> now the boat is heading into port. <laughs> and the guests are, it's all packing up time. And Haley's like, oh, I can't wait to shave my vagina. It's just the little things in life, isn't it? <laughs> so then this hugs goodbye and Adam's like oh guys the trip was awesome few hiccups you know a few times we were looking for drinks and help and we had to actually go find it and Louisa was hungry needed more snacks it's like oh f fuck off Louisa I don't know why I'm so <laughs> mad at Louisa but I'm like furious with Louisa and her constant neediness <laughs> well it's just weird because we like even the last charter last charter was so they were so needy and so high maintenance but they were still relatively nice i seem to remember when they left but these people were like yeah louisa had like a moment where she was a little hungry but overall they seemed like generally fine guests and by the way i just want to say that um i'm still mad at them for being angry that they sat at a that they went through an eight course tasting menu that took two hours because someone was just telling me that they went to a fancy restaurant and their multi-course meal was four hours. So I just want to say, these people don't know what they're talking about. 
And then for them to complain here at the end, it just really pissed me off. <laughs> Adam's just one of those guys. Like, guys, you know, like we did have to get some of our own things. And my wife, you know, my wife needs more snacks. Like, <laughs> Uh, so Rachel's like, Rachel kind of whispers to Fraser. She's like, no more tasting menus. And he goes, no more sitting around doing fucking nothing. Mm-hmm. And then Adam's like, but thanks for keeping us safe, guys. <laughs> this is for you. Guys, we're going to miss you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I just wrote, oh, fuck off. Get off the boat. And so then Fraser's- he seals it when he goes, bye, guys. A ciao. Oh, fuck <laughs> off, Adam. <laughs> So then everyone's like very surprised that he was so harsh. And Fraser's like, I will take the blame. It's my f- service is a problem. It was my fault. And Tony goes, no, it's a team thing, bro. Like just how it's like a team thing to make sure no one eats too much food on this boat. Am I right, everyone? No, <laughs> not, not too much. Uh, and he's like, well, thank you for saying it either way, Tony. And so Fraser, let's see. Oh, so now it's the tip meeting. So Sandy's like, I just want to say, welcome aboard, Tyler. Wow, what a stunner already. Tyler, you should marry Ronnie. Okay, okay, everybody, <laughs> listen. Now, when we get feedback from a client, it's just that. It's feedback. It's not saying you're a bad person or you're not doing a great job. Uh, that's what I say, okay, <laughs> when you're not a good person or not doing a great job. Okay, how will we know there's something to change if no one tells us. Sandy, Sandy, Norma. Sandy, Sandy, Norma. Yes, go ahead, Norma. Do you know where the windshield wipers are? Hello, up. Uh, hey, Sandy, Sandy, Norma. Sandy, Sandy, Norma. Uh, I got some feedback. Um, you suck. Okay, there you go. Some of your favorite feedback. That feedback that you love. I love feedback from the client. It was constructive. It was excellent. Feedback makes you better. It's like, what are you trying to work feedback into? (laughs) Feedback. I I thought it was going to be like, feedback makes you, like, gives you seed back or something. (laughs) Yeah. She's really trying to sell us on feedback. And you know she's trying to sell us on it because she's doing that thing that she does with her hands where she looks like she's making homemade noodles or something. Where her hands come out and they come in and out and in. Or like Cat's Cradle or something. She's know? doing her women empowerment. You know, the mayor hands like Thomas used to do on Southern Charm where you just do like the, I'm a politician, so I move my hands like this. She starts moving her hands like that. Um, because she used to do women empowerment speeches. Yeah. Like that was her thing before. And I think this is one of her feedback makes a wait, feedback holds the weed back. Right. Uh, you know what? I'm going to keep working on that one. Come to me again when someone else takes too long to serve something. I am open to all the feedback. Look, hey, look, here's some feedback right now. Tony, you looks like you're raising your hand. Uh, Captain Sandy, do we have to call it feedback? Can we call it workout back? I just feel like that'd be a healthier way to approach it. Feedback brings the speed back. Wow. Feedback. feedback. You know what? Because your back needs to be fed. Okay, because you carry a lot of things on it, because that's what a team player does. Okay? Especially Haley. Okay, Tony, that's enough. <laughs> okay. So this tip is 22 grand. Not bad for a douchebag who said ciao on his way out. Am I right? <laughs> okay, so you guys have worked so hard that tomorrow I have personally arranged a boat for you to take to the pecans. Okay? The, the, where you're going to go to the pecans. Oh, I love that 70s show. No, that's Laura Prepon. This is the Pitons, okay? <laughs> and Fraser's like, I oh, think fuck I needed that. And she's like, so turn the boat around. All you need is passion. <laughs> turn it upside down. I'm doing the I'm Not doing the Carney me. Wilson line right now. Turn it upside down. Hold on, I I'm I'm hey guys, I'm getting some feedback. It seems like the Bravo audience would prefer turn the boat around. Every now and then you get a new charter <laughs> coming on board. Turn the boat around. <laughs> Every now and then you learn to turn on a wiper on your windshield and it cleans up the rain. Turn, turn the boat around. Every now and then you gotta go to the pitons. But how do you get there? 
without a boat. Turn around. Feedback makes the speed back and the teed back and the peed back and the feed back and the weed back and the turn around. Boat. Every now and then we got a charter. Turn around. Boat. So let's just keep it to three course menus. <laughs> Cause I need you more tonight. And I need you more than ever. And if we're gonna get a good tip, gotta make sure you clean the leather. <laughs> Looking out there, got an appetizer, and I want my main course not in a pie. We gotta serve him some food now. Tomorrow's gonna be too long. Tonight's gotta be when dinner is. Once upon a time, I was falling in love. Now I'm playing with my own cooter. Whoa, wait a minute. Wait, Rachel, wait geez, a minute. hold Listen, on a this second. Is just the inspiration. This is a okay. dream. This you is a women can dream tune. Okay, all right. Well, let's let's just pack up that tune. <laughs> Rachel ruined it. Rachel ruined it. So, um, Tyler keeps talking about how tall he is. Which I think is really funny, too. Like, they keep cutting to him. He's like, oh, my God, I'm so tall. I can't even fit in the shower properly. I'm like, ha, ha, because that's like Fraser's thing, you know? <laughs> this TV show, yeah. No, I remember when he was like, well, Ross, have you ever been in a shower that's too small? And then there was, like, hilarity because then Fraser and Niles got stuck in the shower stall. And then, like, Ra- then, and then what Daphne had to come and use butter to get them out of the shower. That's what you're talking about, right? <laughs> <laughs> that the that was a long lost Fraser episode. Oh god! So the captain is, she calls Rachel and she's like, "Hey, Rach, want to go to coffee? I want to talk to you about song structure." <laughs> you know, it felt like I was really setting you up to have a moment where you sang about how you used to do eight course menus, but then you instead you sang about your cooter. And I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to give you some feedback right now. Okay? Next time I'll just try to stick to four bars. Four bars! <laughs> just want to give you some feedback. Feedback. You know, oh, God. So then Ben calls fucking Camille. He's so ridiculous. So he's like, Camille. It's been, and he tells us, the way Camille left, she had 30 minutes. I was devastated. And she's like, you know what, Ben? I'm just, like, so annoyed still, to be honest. Like, I don't even feel like talking right now. <laughs> yeah. I, him romanticizing not just their relationship, but her as a concept that, like, he that's not how she wanted her to go out. Like, how do you want her to go out? With a, like, shoot her out of a cannon? Do you want a procession? <laughs> yes. Shoot her out of a cannon. How Give else her do you the throw- respect she deserves. <laughs> shoot her out of a cannon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's one way to get rid of garbage. You just toss it over the side if you're inconsiderate to the water, or you just let it just go. The point is... She does not deserve any sort of farewell tour here. Okay, there's no ticker tape parades for Camille. Yeah, she got fucking fired. Yeah. Commercials. Here comes one right now. So then uh, the captain and Rachel at coffee. uh, She's like, Seventh Heaven Bakery. (laughs) Seventh Heaven. Nothing creepy happened there. Hey, let's go to a bakery uh, where there's a bunch of kids who belong to the same family, okay? Yeah. Okay, now listen. Uh, you are a joy, Rachel. A joy to have on board. And I mean that. I just want to make sure your timing, you know, how do you think that's going? <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, uh, I'm just like not accomplishing the things to the standards that, I, that I'm used to. Oh my God, it's Jessica Biel. Oh no, I just got to, I, I think I wanted to see her there, you know. She wasn't there at all. Sorry, you were saying something, Rachel. I got distracted by my own hopes and dreams. I'll get faster. Yeah. So then we go to Fraser, who's having a meeting with service. And he's like, uh, service, 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 service. All right. Now, here's here's where we are, guys. All right. We just need more service. So, Alyssa, I need you to get your head around beach picnic stuff and get better at preparing it. And she's like, I'm just like so done. I'm like so done. And she gets up and walks off crying. And Do, he's like, doing the Camille, if you will. Yes. I mean, look, we knew that when Camille left, we were going to see what an asshole Rachel was. I mean, not Rachel, Alyssa was pretty quickly. I didn't know it was going to be the next episode. Well, it's like the ring. 
or a smile or whatever. You know, you get rid of one demon, but it's too late. The demon has moved on to the next thing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so Alyssa's like, I'm so done right now. Like, we feel bad. Like, we know we can do better, but I'm just like done right now. I'm like so fucking tired. Like doing this charter with a stew down and feeling all the anxiety of this Camille situation. I'm just like done. I'm like, you were a deck stew down, but you actually have as many stews as every other season of below deck so you were pretty much fully staffed yeah and camille's an asshole but i feel that nobody is acknowledging on this show that she at least worked i mean was she lazy well, yes did she lay down a lot yes did she like, not work did she, yes <laughs> did she have stretches of just like fucking around sure but she was down there doing a lot of lawn i mean she did enough that it's noticeable that she was gone you know uh i don't know i just i, I i'm down to come down on Alyssa. i just I'm not at a place yet where I can support Camille. <laughs> I can't. Well, I can't it's not do supporting her. It's just saying, like, look, you guys thought you were such hot shit and, like, made it that Camille didn't do anything. I mean, the thing that really sucked about Camille was her attitude, you know? Yeah. But she act- she at least wasn't one of the ones who didn't do anything, you know? Yeah. I mean, was she had drunk a shit when attitude. she did it? Perhaps. <laughs> hey, listen, don't judge me. <laughs> so um, Rachel is talking to Sandy still at the Seventh Heaven coffee shop and she's like uh uh-huh. part of the challenges is the inconsistencies of the interior department like Fraser's very good and i do support him <laughs> but i see that he is spreading himself extremely thin which is hilarious when he falls over on his face on the staircase but like otherwise there's a communication breakdown yeah um and the captain's like whoa 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 okay now hold on missy i don't want to get into minutia but you know for the longest time i thought was called minute isn't that funny? So I want everyone to figure it out. But you're great. You're a great leading light. Okay. A so you need light. to communicate what you need to communicate to Fraser, because I'm positive that we can fix it, like toss salad and scrambled eggs. <laughs> I love Sandy being like, "Hey, let's go get a coffee, and you can tell me some things to fix." Whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't give me details. Okay, yeah, don't give you me fix details. It. You You're fix it. You're a beacon it. of light. Okay. <laughs> uh, hey, have you ever seen the lighthouse fart? That's like you. Okay. <laughs> But also, yeah, like, let's figure out how we can fix your timing. And she's like, well, here's the problem with my timing. Service sucks. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Too far there. Whoa, that was too far. (laughs) Hey, you're doing a great job, except for the fact that you actually aren't doing a great job, which is why I had to tell you to stop making more than half of the dishes that you're making per meal. But you know what? I know you're working hard. I know it. Okay. Oh, you just let another stinker out. Okay. Silent and deadly. (laughs) So then Fraser is messing with some flowers and he just goes could you be more erect please (laughs) and then we go to ross showing tyler around the boat and tyler you know he's like and that's where you put this and that's where you do this and tyler's like well my first job it was a deck stew position so i don't need people to tell me what to do just when to stop doing it because i can't stop working He's like the Terminator of working. Like then we go to like Terminator Vision and he's like it's like the panel where it like puts a square around like a towel that's like out of place, like out of place. So um uh so Fraser is Ross in the crew mess and he's like talking to Fraser about like this like the like, the roomy situation, which isn't a situation except that Katie proposed something. And Fraser's like Yes, but I think it's smart if we stay as roommates because we're both head of departments and this way we can talk about things. I think that would be very good. So Ross is like, Ross basically just wants Fraser to say that's that way he doesn't have to be the one to tell Katie, no, I don't want to do this. Yes, and um, it works because Ross is like, we're also good cabin mates. And so, you know, listen, the sound of your jerking off is like rhythmic brainwashing and I have very peaceful sleeps. So you can shag a girl elsewhere. It's like those rain machines, you know, it's like you can either choose crickets or (laughs) rain and you're the rain. So I don't even have to put a nickel into you to get a good <laughs> massage as I drift off at night. So then Ross goes to Katie's door. She's like, hey. And he's like, uh, so I came to offer you this jug with sad news. I guess he's holding a jug. The, he's holding the milk steamer from the cappuccino machine. Like this milk steamer <laughs> metal cup thing. And he's like, <laughs> sad news. I was like, you couldn't even muster up a good prop. 
I, Come on. Not even like anything, like a hat or something. So she goes, um, I already know you're not moving in. Like now I'm mad at you. And he's like, well, there's many factors that come into considerations. You know, part one of them is that I did not have it on my bingo card to have a relationship with a Fraggle Rock cast member. So I thought I'd stay with <laughs> Frasier. <laughs> and she's telling us, I actually thought like it was a hilarious idea to move in because like your work flirt becomes your roommate i mean it makes sense yeah katie that's real fucking hilarious <laughs> yeah it makes a lot of sense i'm it worried makes a ton of you. sense yeah. the guy who's tried to hook up with anyone but you for the last several charters um now trying to get him into your room no Eesh. so this is when everybody's getting ready to go out and tony tells us that he loves board shorts he's like i'm going full board shorts bro i have 30 pairs <laughs> Which it's always nice to find something new out about Tony. Great, said every woman he dates. I so. know. <laughs> Haley comes out in this white, like crop top dress, and she goes, "Oh my God, look at me! I look like a tampon." <laughs> <laughs> you want some board shorts? So Fraser uh, goes, "Oh, I'm gonna grab some jewelry, so I feel like he- human, a disgusting, despicable, awful human." And he goes, so guys, look at my shoes. Out. I feel like I'm in downtown Marrakesh searching for beggar food. <laughs> like, okay. I forgot about that. I didn't write that down. Uh, so they get to dinner, and he gives a big cheers to Tyler and welcomes him. And then Ben gets a ding, and he's like, oh, I'll be back. And he gets up and walks off, and Rachel's like, what's going on here? All the cameras are following Ben. This feels like some kind of a fucking setup. <laughs> And she's right, because Ben walks back with Camille, and Alyssa's like, oh my god, that is, like, so awkward. So, awkward. That is, like, so awkward. Oh my god, so isn't it awkward? It is. She's, like, talking to herself to convince <laughs> everybody it's awkward. Alyssa, you're trying to get us to believe that you're not an asshole, and now you feel bad that Camille was fired, and you're being blamed for it, and now you're going to just completely be an asshole. Like, this is your chance. So, like, get whatever pity you're looking for and be cool. So Haley's like, oh, what such a nice surprise. Sort of like when you go to the dentist and they give you a complimentary toothbrush. Lovely surprise. Oh, my God. Awkward. This is so awkward, you guys. And Fraser's like, um, are we good? I don't even know if we're good. You know, like, nice to see you again. Maybe if you aren't fucking furious with me again. Oh, my God. I hope there's no bad blood. On my back, on my stomach. She'll probably stab me in the front if she does. Oh, God. No bad blood. She's just a bad stew. All right? And Alyssa's like, oh, my God. Kamul is back. I would die. Like, I wouldn't even think of coming back. I'd be so embarrassed. Like, it's so embarrassing to get fired. And, like, she got fired and came back. It's just, like, so embarrassing. And Tyler's like, oh my god, she got fired, and then she came back. She goes, yeah, it's just embarrassing, right, guys? <laughs> and um, she goes off to have a cigarette, and Camille is... Um, Camille says, so Ben's talking to Camille, and Ben goes, wow, having you back, it just doesn't feel real, which is ridiculous. And then Camille goes, yeah, we were, like, cut short too soon, like... There were a lot of feelings mustering inside of me. I don't think your feelings were mustering. (laughs) So then we go to uh, Haley and Alyssa smoking. And Alyssa's like, oh, my God. Like, I would be so embarrassed. But, like, for her to come back shows she wasn't regretful of anything she did. You know what I mean? I mean, this is just, like, so awkward. Well, how do you feel? Do you feel you should speak to her? She's like, no, it's done. Because, like... We already fired her, and she must feel it's my fault she was fired, so whatever. Yeah, she's. I feel like Alyssa, it's it's like you won, so just like take the victory and... Take and, the W, you yeah, know? Yeah, just like, because this is actually making her look really shitty, and actually kind of obnoxious, because Camille did, did get fired, and she was like, she was, she was really upset about it, and I, Camille is garbage, but for you to be like, wow, it's so embarrassing that you got fired, it's like, that's like a real shitty move. Like, that's that's shitty. Like, Camille already has enough to be embarrassed about. So Alyssa's like, Alyssa comes back to the table and she's like, wow, I like savory things and I like sweet things, but, like, I don't understand pineapple on pizza. <laughs> that's not how you're going to win back over the 
It's like, you got to bring better table banter. <laughs> Alyssa's losing this whole episode. And really listen, is. it's a tight race because you've also got Ross and Katie here. Yeah. So Ben's like, you look amazing tonight. Did I say that already? And Camille's just looking around to talk to anybody else, basically, right? And so Tyler is at the other end of the table. Tyler is pouring wine for somebody, and he looks like he can't pour wine. Like he looks like he's having a lot of trouble with that, which makes me wonder about his backstory. Of, Is it like, because he he like bashed the wine bottle open by the pack and is pouring <laughs> pouring out the wrong side? <laughs> like he's in a he's like in a fight. Uh, he just looks like he can't hold the bottle right i mean i don't know now i'm suspicious of his like perfect service resume he has a lot of he has a very i will say the comments that he's made he has not made a lot of comments but they trend towards being a little self-satisfied like he's he's like the day i left in the airport i called my boyfriend and i I called the guy and i said do you want to be my boyfriend he's like yes we're gonna get married by the end of the year i'm like I don't know. He he talks a big game. You got to see if he comes through. Or when he said, oh, yeah, when my boyfriend came out and he just started sobbing like he was never going to be able to live without me. It's like, okay, okay. To be fair, maybe his boyfriend was Kyle. Ooh, no. <laughs> um, so Fraser and Camille go smoke now. And she's like, don't worry, I don't hold on to resentment. And he's like, oh, I really hope you don't, because I really do like you, Camille. (laughs) And uh, he tells us, I'm so pleased she came with an open heart. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not sure she did. I think she just was horny (laughs) and wanted to be on camera some more. So Frazier's very happy he can redo his goodbye with Camille. And there's like a group hug with Frazier and Haley and Camille. They like have a nice moment. And then Ben and Camille sit on a curb, which is appropriate. Like, that's a good visual metaphor for them. And yeah. <laughs> and she's talking about how she has to head out back to Mississippi tomorrow. And she's like, but tonight tonight was what I needed to walk away with my head high. I'm like, you're sitting on a curb. You were literally you're sitting a on curb. a curb. <laughs> and then <there's laughs> some weird love song comes on while they're yeah, kissing, which never happens on this show. And it's like, you gotta go, but I wish you stay. And all those things I wanna say. You have nothing to say to each other. Song, just stop song. Okay? So they make <laughs> out. And Ben is like, this relationship is like nothing I've ever experienced. <laughs> Okay, this is called <laughs> this landing is called someone Chicago. way out of your league. <laughs> yeah. That, I'm that's just going to say that. I think it's just you've never had a girl this hot before, and you can't believe it's being cut so short. And I don't that, blame you. Yeah, that, you, yeah th- that's it. That's it right there. You know what? It's, it's called she's out of your league. Okay, that's it. So um, he's, but he's being ridiculous. He's like, she just, she's just the spark that lights me up. Oh, I can feel my heart sinking. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you know okay. whose else heart is gonna sink? Your parents when you bring her back with you. Like, oh. <laughs> so then um, Tony is telling, I don't know who cares. He's like, I, I go to bed, I wake up at six or seven like an animal. And then Ross and Katie are lying outside on they're back at the yacht now and he's they're whispering to each other lying down um what what do you, one of those couch things yeah, and he's like you bad. know I just want you to know this moving in together it was nothing personal you know it's just like I talked to Fraser he wanted a partner and it's like oh my god stop like it's fine it's like yeah it's not fine she's clearly pissed he goes so you know but don't worry I've designated a cabin for us in the guest area so then um then Haley meanwhile cuts to Haley in the bathroom she just like walks in on someone and then we see Tyler hitting his head as he gets in the bunk it's like bloopers around the boat and uh Alyssa complaining that she's sexually frustrated and she's like I don't even want to be penetrated I just want to play so and then, then we see Katie and Ross okay so now they're in the guest cabin and so we're getting like one of those we just see the door closed and we just hear, uh, are we are we allowed to take a shower in here? That's a guest <laughs> cabin, ma'am. And then they take a shower, and you just hear them moaning in the shower, moaning and boning in the shower. Yeah, and honestly, like every time this happens, I just think of Francesca, the one season Chief Sue who came after Kate, who got so mad at Elizabeth Ross's ex for having sex with that guy with the thin eyebrows. Um, in a guest cabin, and like she literally got Elizabeth fired over it because she was it was like the final straw. And I feel like ever since that season, we have seen 
crew members on Below Deck, any Below Deck, having sex in the Master every single season since then. Yeah, I know. It used to be like, oh my god, I cannot believe they're having sex in the Master! And now it's just like, ding! Another one's having sex in the Master, you know? Yeah, it's like, okay, everyone, the uh, guests are gone. I'll set up the sling up there, or the swing, a swing and a sling, whatever it is. Yeah, so and Ross master. is like, Katie and I Sex. have built up a lot of tension that needed to be released. I'd like to hook up six times a day every day, to be honest. Obviously, I'm a sex addict. <laughs> That's, like, hilarious to say when you're, like, 20. But, sir, you are um, you are pink-eyed and runny-eyed <laughs> and uh, obviously have an issue, and it's not cute, okay? It's like a package Get of some shrimp. So, <laughs> did you hear when he said to run? <laughs> He looks like he's made out of fish flakes. (laughs) He literally looks like Bonito. He (laughs) he looks like he would make a very lovely broth. (laughs) So, did you hear? Did you did you say this when Ross said, "As your head of department, I'm going to ask you to rate this sexual experience." Oh God! Just wow. So then, um, that was the morning. Oh, we didn't talk about this, uh, but Sandy gave them a day off. Today is, oh, we did, because we talked about the pitons. So um, they're waking up. It's time to go out. Tony's working out. The boat arrives to take them. And Sandy's really trying to sell this experience because she's like, hey, not a bad way to show up, right? And today you're going to have fun because you're going to have a mud bath and you deserve it. You're going to go see the pitons. You're going to have a mud bath. And um, that's pretty much it. Just mud and mountains, okay? So have fun. Get on the catamaran. <laughs> oh, so they do. They all go. And they go on this like little sailboat thing. And um, Ross is sitting down and Alyssa's passing him. And he's like, oh, great swimsuit. She goes, oh, yeah? Great face. <laughs> so then they all start partying and stuff, and Rachel's in a bikini too. And she's like, oh, I hate bathing suits. I have a back tattoo. I got it nine years ago. <laughs> well, nine and a half. <laughs> well, I was, it was all in one sitting. I said, just make it large enough to not be a tramp stamp. <laughs> More like a target. <laughs> you know, just, you know, just pull it out, squirt it all over that thing. <laughs> At least I hope you do, because quite frankly, I do not need to be breathing. <laughs> It was like a journey. The whole that whole interview <laughs> almost what? like it started off with the back tattoo, then it goes to like fish and colors, and then all of a sudden, like just come on my back because <laughs> I don't want to have kids. What the hell? It was amazing. So here, by the way, now they're all cavorting in the pool. Everyone's socializing, and Tony literally goes and grabs trays of food and hoards them and starts eating by himself. Yeah. Um, and let's see here. Ross, there's, okay, there's a lot Frasier, of going back and forth Yeah, here. it's, it's a lot of just, like, antics, but Fraser talks to Alyssa, and he goes, Going forward, I want you to act like the chief when I'm not around. That's what I expect from my second, always. You are second, and on the boat, a second is chief when I'm not around. Oh, shut so up. You're not like Nancy Pelosi, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, if the president is ever incapacitated, and the vice president... You, Miss Pelosi, would rise to the ranks. Like, okay, get over yourself. You're, you're a designated you're, you... survivor. <laughs> you sort of remind me of Kiva Sutherland. I don't know what it is. I think it's the way you talk urgently on the phone. Right? Come on, dude. So, um, they all jump off the boat and play around, and then they all get necky, and, um,. Rachel's like, hey, Ross, you want a golden shower? As he gets out, and he gets on his hands and knees. She's like, okay, this took a turn. <laughs> this took an actual turn. <laughs> yeah, he's been down that path before. So then they, they get to the pitons and everything. They, that's where they were, I think that's where they were swimming, or maybe not. Who cares? They get to land, and now they go to this sulfur springs. It's like a spa. And this guide, they're walking around, and this guide says, isn't it amazing you're in a potentially active volcano? And everyone's like, yeah like that's not a selling point for me by the way if you tell me that like hey this relaxing experience you might be in the maw of a lava spewing mountain (laughs) i could explode at every moment any moment that's not gonna put me at ease tell me i'm on very bland land yeah exactly yeah that only sounds fun when you're young you're like we could die right now like i feel like once you're past 40 you're like oh my god i could die at any moment literally any moment can we not? I could die. <laughs> I could be in a volcano right now. We all turn to I could be dead right now. 
Oh my god. Oh my god. What if I died right now? Away in a manger. Oh my god, I could die right now. <laughs> I would be upset if I died because I was taking a mud bath in a volcano. People would be like, "What was wrong with you? Why were you taking? It? Why did you go into a volcano?" <laughs> My mom would be like, I "Figure, start in a fucking mud bath." Yeah, it's like <laughs> I don't want. That's not how I want to die is in a mud bath in a volcano because the shame. Uh, it's just because people would make fun of me too much. Yeah, That'd be a news like, article. Uh, yeah. Um, so Haley's like, uh, oh god, this mud's in holes I didn't even know I existed. They say it makes you look ten years younger. I think it makes you look covered in shit. That's what it makes you look. <laughs> so then Alyssa starts grabbing onto Ross in the mud and like rubbing him and having he's rubbing her and they're like hugging and like laughing and flirting. And Katie's just watching, like so upset, you know, and she's like, Is this goal just to fuck everybody on the boat? Like I thought we were moving forward and this is straight up disrespectful. Like this is making me wonder what this is now. Really? You I mean Katie, I hate to say this because I know you're in a rough position, but you are such a fucking moron, okay? And the reason it makes me so angry is because you are what enables men like this to still walk around. Like this guy shouldn't even have a job. He shouldn't even be in society. You know, and what was worse is that she actually said in the middle of that she goes, "I mean, we had a magical night together." I'm like, "You had a magical night together, showering in the in the <laughs> master bedroom, and then him saying, as your chief, as your as your supervisor, <laughs> how would you rate the sexual experience? Where was the magic in that? You know, and yeah, it's just it's one of these awful codependent situations because it's like they feed into each other. Like he's aloof and can't be tied down because he has his own bullshit reasons and then she's the one who sort of like lives for this punching bag situation because she wants to be the fixer and like in in a weird way like this is exciting for her or something like that it's like this horrific collision of psychological issues that we see all the time and it's just like girl please please have some self-respect go on like stop yeah, it kills me. So then um, now Ross is just shit-faced. I mean, he is just disgust. He is, like, disgustingly drunk, you know? Yeah. Where he's, like, burping really loud and wet burps and crawling all over everybody. And um, he's just disgusting. And so now he's, like, cuddling on Katie. And he's being gets- all drunk and gross and, like, hanging off the pole. And everybody's annoyed with him because he's making them all look like idiots. Yeah, but this gives Katie the chance to step into, like, the Amanda Petula role. To be like, stop, stop, you're super drunk. It's not fun for either of us. She can be the one who gets to, like, scold him and everything. Like, I think there's, like, some weird psychological thrill that, like, that comes for being it. Because it's, like, she's the one who gets to exclusively tell him how to behave, you know? Like, it's, like, some fucked up thing, Maybe, you know? like, maybe, but I'll give her some leeway on that one. Just because he's entered that phase of drunk that... I don't think you're expecting with somebody, you know? It's like when it's beyond fucked up, it's just like... But she doesn't have to be his caretaker. Like, she's... she's She is... She no, but in her mind, role. they're like boyfriend and girlfriend. Right. She's like, I can't believe my boyfriend's treating me like this. Where, <laughs> yeah, even, you know, yes. like in her mind, that's what's going on, even though it's not realistic, you know. So he's like stumbling all over, walking on the net on the sailboat and stuff. And then, then he goes inside and they have food in there and he just grabs it with his hand and shoves it in his face <laughs> and it all falls off of his face back into the food. I mean, he's just disgusting. And he knocks over Katie's bag and she's like, sober up, sober up. And by the way, please, I hope no one... Th- Thinks that because I'm talking about, you know, how she's living for this, not living for this role, but like that she is in a certain way really embracing this role of whatever that I'm letting him off easy because he's disgusting. Oh, he's, he's fucking terrible. disgusting. Yeah, he's terrible. Period. Yeah, he's terrible. But she's, think- she's savable. You know what I mean? She's it's savable. like you don't worry about Ross because Ross is beyond, he's just disgusting. You know, you see who Ross is and you know he's always going to be disgusting. But Katie, it's like, she's she, you see, like, a, I, there's like a vulnerability and a sweetness there, you know? She and seems a like a good person. <laughs> She's sober enough to, to, to have better judgment, you well, know? Well, she just seems like a good girl, you know? And I don't like to see her messing around with, ugh, I don't know. Well, I just, just feel like we've all been here, you know? It's, it's just like, one of these ugh. things where, like, like yeah she is doing this sort of this um, role play where she's acting like their boyfriend girlfriend but like he's literally given so many signs about why they are not only are they not that but they shouldn't be that and yet she is still somehow looking the other way and embracing it and and so it's not just that she's 
like oh she's taking on this caretaker role because she thinks that their boyfriend girlfriend it's like oh the fact that she thinks that their boyfriend and girlfriend is like it's like terrible it's like katie please save yourself save yourself but it's hard to see those signs because when the other signs that are being put out are like you're hot and i'm really into you those signs are so much louder than the other ones yeah you know <laughs> yeah well he's bullshit he's, he's fucking with her too because he he does this oh i'm into you thing he couldn't even honestly be strong enough to say oh we're not moving in together because that's a bad idea he had to blame it on fraser you know so he's fucked up and he needs to like learn to take responsibility for whatever bullshit but he in his life but he i think he likes toying with women etc and i think he likes the i think he likes the 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 ability to have options open and to have them sort of fawn over him etc yeah um so yeah. that's and you know short the short of it he's disgusting stay away from he's him disgusting. so now everybody is really grossed out because now they're going to dinner he's falling all over the place he's burping he's just being disgusting and rachel's like look i can't throw stones at a glass house and then it just cuts her going titties, titties. <laughs> titties. And she's like, but maybe you should uh, stop because you're failing humanity and yourself. <laughs> Your parents should be proud, fuck boy, okay? And I'm the one who just talked about getting a tattoo to aim your spooge at <laughs> on my back. So so then, you know, Ross is wasted at the table. He, he keeps ordering rum and coke. He's like, uh, uh, I don't have a rum and coke. And he's like, you already ordered that. So Alyssa is like, oh my God, Ross, the button, the last, you should button the last button on your shirt. Here, let me help. So she's standing with him, like dealing with this button situation, being close. And it's just one of these things where it's like, Alyssa, you're so concerned with people hating you. And yet you like, there's a girl on this boat who actively likes this guy, even though she shouldn't, but she does. And uh, yes, uh, in a, in a progressive way world we all have a right to go after what we want to go after but honestly you're you're being a dick to katie right now yeah she's being terrible and so you already said her line right i'm gonna flirt with you because i do believe i'm hotter than her Ugh. i did not say that and he's, that's what she <laughs> says to him I mean, that's just so yeah. fucking rude everyone's pissing me off now okay you can tell we just entered episode 10 because this is the part in the season where i'm like okay just sink the boat at this point, just thinking. <laughs> so uh, he's like, oh, you know how bad I am. She goes, oh, yeah, I know you're bad. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I flirt with Frost because he's a scumbag. And it's just fun to see everyone squirm. But at the same time, like, you can't ruin a relationship that's not there. So as much as Katie wants to be his wifey, he's just not in the market. Yeah, he's also incapacitated because of how fucking drunk he is so yeah. don't make me stand up for ross by like trying to totally take advantage of someone who's like literally on the floor drunk right now ma'am you need True. to back the fuck up but she's also not totally wrong i mean there when she says you can't ruin a relationship doesn't there is she's, there is no relationship and ross i know is but not she's just market. doing it to be an. it seems like she's just doing it to no, be she's an, being an asshole katie why why else would she be doing that you know no she's being a total she, she's doing it actually i don't think she's doing it to be an asshole to katie i think she's doing it because she she is you know she's got massive daddy issues she needs some sort of like validation that's what she, that's what's going on here but um yeah she's being an asshole not necessarily wrong in the things that she's saying but she's still being an asshole yeah <laughs> um so let's see so then so Katie, they order so the, they're back at the table now and so they're ordering wait. and then <laughs> Alyssa Ross. goes Katie do you want some wine Katie's just like Ugh. and Ross is wasted at the table and this did make me laugh because because he's just like a wasted mess and he goes is anyone else's dinner crunchy <laughs> <laughs> And then Katie is trying to have a serious conversation with someone who's literally like drooling, you know? She's like, I want to talk about where we are because, like, it's obvious everyone just saw what happened. And he goes, Seriously? And she walks off annoyed, and Fraser walks off with her. And she's like, I'm like an idiot for rolling with this. And then Ro it just cuts back to Ross at the table going, Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do. Katie, Katie's like, it's just embarrassing. <laughs> I mean, it is embarrassing, but also like it's uh, like also you've had this is what charter five or six. Yeah, it's not new been, information it's either. Not new. Right? It's not new. So anymore. then, 
the waiter brings uh, something to the table, and as she leaves, Tyler goes, she sees very well, huh? I love it. Uh, so then, <laughs> Tyler, the most qualified of all time. So then they all leave the restaurant. Ross is just embarrassing still. Rachel's calling him like a kitty. You know, she's like, here we go, boy. And Haley sees that Alyssa is now holding hands with Ross, walking down mm -hmm. the dock. And um, yeah. she's like, oh, it's just getting to the point where it's just rude. And I can see why you're angry, Katie. Like, she's literally holding it. That's just wrong. That is just wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, she says breaking girl code. So now they're, now they're back in their rooms. And um, Katie is Katie is uh, wants to tidy up her room now. And Ross enters. And he goes, sh 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 every day, every day. She's like, no, don't play that game with me. He goes, what, what, what? She goes, Alyssa. And then Alyssa yeah. cuts to Alyssa saying, the whole Ross and Katie situation is awkward. Like, dude, he flirts, he flirts with me all the time. Like, when no one's around, he's literally grabbing me. I'm like, the thing is, yep. the cameras on this boat are kind of there all the time. Yeah, show me the footage. Show me the footage. I don't know what she's up to here, but me knew like. So yeah. Katie's like, yeah, if you only had mugged with me and I would have been in your bed. And uh, Tyler's cracking up because he's on the bottom bunk in her room, right? And so Tyler's like, um, yeah, I understand. I'm only 23, but I have a better moral compass at the moment than Ross at 38. It's unacceptable the way he acts. <laughs> and uh, then and then Alyssa's in the hot tub and she's talking about how Katie has no self-respect. Although, Alyssa, you also have no self-respect if you're going after Ross, too. And uh, Ross is like, well, I have... Then Ross is telling Katie that he has nothing to do with Alyssa. And then Katie goes, that could not be further from a lie. I'm like, uh, further from the truth, girl. <laughs> girl. And then next week, Alyssa continues her spiral when we see her turn the voice she used on Camille all the time onto Haley, which is not going to yeah, work out so not... great for mm -hmm. you. And then on top of that, then she also talks badly about Captain Sandy, and Captain Sandy hears it, and then he gets mad at the entire interior team. It looks like next week is going to be a shit show. Oh, yes, can't wait. It's turning into a very good season. Very, very uh, good. Everybody, thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, thanks for being here. Uh, we'll be back uh, later this week with more fresh recaps. And come join us in Austin and in Dallas for our live shows. Go to watchwhatcrappens.com for the tickets. And we will catch you there. Bye. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. She's not just a Sheila. She's a Daniela. Itchels. Dana C. Dana Do, Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickolus. Hava Nagila Weber. Jamie, she has no less namey. Sipped some scotch with Jessica Trotch. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Can't stop fanning over Tina Manning. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. You're never alone with Lacey Monteleone. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. There ain't no problem that Sarah Salvia can't solve ya. Christy Wowardy Dow. Howdy. The Bay Area Betches, Betches. And our super premium sponsors, the incredible edible Matthew Sisters. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Erica, 500 days of summers. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Undo your fasteners, it's Aaron Kastner. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Shadley. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. Give him hell, Miss Noel. Can't have a meal without the Emily sides. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Make it last nur with Aaron Kastner. We want to hang with Liz Lang. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kutar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch or Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com survey.